examining climate change and the environmental issues in Shanghai, which cause global warming, leading to climate change. We will also look at the solutions for these environmental issues using the stabilization wedges and also looking at Shanghai's ways into creating a sustainably developed environment. Shanghai is a city which is located on the central coast of China. It is the most popular city in the country and it gained international attention during the 19th century from European countries. During the 1950s to the 1960s, Shanghai became an industrial center for China's industries since it had a large amount of skilled workers. It is currently the largest city in China and it is vital for China's future commercially, economically and financially. Climate change is defined as a shift in the average weather of a region or a city. This shift is then caused by global warming. Climate change occurs due to the increase of atmospheric carbon dioxide because of the fossil fuels which humans consume and use. One of the effects of climate change is the occurrence of drought-stricken areas. Shanghai has a number of environmental issues leading to climate change and urbanization or population growth. Shanghai's population growth is estimated to consist of about 23 million people. It is therefore no surprise that traffic congestion would be also part of these environmental issues in Shanghai. Shanghai will then also face persistent population pressure in the coming years because of the rapid urbanization and population growth which occurs in the city. Air quality in Shanghai is the main concern of environmental issues. As a result of the amount of large industries which use coal in Shanghai, air pollution occurs. Fossil fuels from these coal generating industries releases or produces greenhouse gases into the atmosphere causing them to react with the heat from the sun and this results in the formation of smog. The citizens of Shanghai are then forced to wear masks to protect themselves from these harmful effects of smog. Smog is derived from two words, smoke and fog. Smog is harmful and this is evident from the components which form it. It causes lung cancer in humans and it may be harmful to our plants as well as our animals. It is harmful to our environment as well as our cities and if our cities get covered with smog, residents may immediately feel the effects. Like all mega cities, Shanghai produces a huge amount of solid waste daily. Due to the increase of the population in Shanghai, solid waste management may lack. Two-thirds of waste material are generated by industries and one-third is released by households. Industries release some of their waste products, but the rest which is not used consists of smelting residue, fire coal ash, and slag. Waste disposal can be hazardous to our human health as well as our environment. In human health, it causes damage to our DNA and also causes lung cancer. On our environment, it causes air pollution as well as water pollution, which can in turn impact health as well as climate patterns regionally and globally. Water quality is also a major issue in Shanghai and it all starts in the Huangpu River, which is based in the city. The Huangpu River is Shanghai's main source for most of the city's water supplies. The river is a huge port, a water transportation system, as well as a sink for many of the city's industrial discharges. Industries usually discharge 50% of their wastewater into the river, and the pollution which occurred kills animals as there were pigs found dead near the river. Pollution in the river causes there to be a lack of water quality. Shanghai takes pride in itself as one of the cities which try to live sustainably. In the next few slides, we will examine the solutions which Shanghai has implemented into clearing environmental issues. 
On the 19th of May in 2014, the President of China, Xi Jinping, met with the General Secretary of the United Nations, Ban Ki-moon, to outline environmental global challenges as well as strategies to reduce these challenges. The meeting ended with the introduction of a new project for sustainable development, which is called the Shanghai Manual. The Shanghai Manual is then used by a number of countries who wish to implement sustainable development in their own environments. Through far-reaching of land as well as food and birth control devices available to all, population in Shanghai could decrease, leading to less population-based environmental issues. The Chinese government also came up with the one-child policy to reduce population as they could see how it was affecting climate change and their city environmentally. Less people means less traffic congestion or other issues. Central and Shanghai governments are dealing with pollution in several ways. Industries are being relocated in order to not be all clustered in one place causing harm. There is also the development of natural gas in the East China Sea as well as converting household coal burning to gas. To achieve this conversion, Shanghai and the Chinese government have built natural gas factories to compensate the use of coal-based factories. Shanghai also has a target to reduce 2.5 billion pollutants by the year 2017. Shanghai's capacity to deal with solid waste has improved in recent years. Waste from heavy industries has decreased due to the implementation of energy saving strategies and pollution control. The Shanghai government has invested in additional collection as well as waste management programs where waste production and disposal is reduced. Some waste is reused and also the recycling of material which can be recycled. The Shanghai Environmental Protection Bureau, also known as SEPB, has implemented water quality and sewerage projects in order to collect industrial and domestic wastewater. The SEPB also collected a large number of discharge regulation to prevent any new product activities in areas which will pollute water source protection zones. Stabilization wedges are just another way of reducing carbon emissions produced by environmental problems, be it in Shanghai or any other region. Stefan Pakala and Robert Sokolo wrote the famous paper on stabilization wedges in 2004. At that time, there were huge amounts of emissions and the paper stated strategies which would keep them below 500 part per million, which is the measurement of a chemical per unit volume of water. Pakala and Sokolo predicted that to do this, it would be enough to find seven ways to reduce carbon emissions. Based on Shanghai's environmental issues mentioned in this presentation, Shanghai could make use of three stabilization wedges, the first one being transport efficiency. Transport efficiency states that a wedge of emission savings could be reached if the fuel efficiency of all cars projected for 2060 would be doubled from 30 miles per gallon, which is approximately 48.27 kilometers and 3.78 liters of fuel. Rail is the major mode of transport in Shanghai. Therefore, this wedge could be achieved also through usage of more public transport and creating vehicles with strong by light materials. The second wedge is transport conservation. As we know, most carbon footprint is implemented by the kilometers or hours which we travel using the vehicles. A wedge could be achieved if the number of kilometers traveled by cars is cut in half. The third wedge is efficient coal plants. Coal is Shanghai's main resource of electricity and this plays a role in carbon emissions. This states that a wedge could be achieved if less usage of coal is implemented through doubling coal-based electricity efficiency and carbon emissions would be reduced. Shanghai also makes use of efficient coal plants. 
And finally, as a mega city, Shanghai adheres to build a strategy of sustainable development which will be based on reducing emissions of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases which may lead to climate change.